Okay, so we're trying to turn numbers from scientific notation into standard form. So what I just like to do is start by writing down what the coefficient is. Remember, the coefficient is this first number right here. In this case, it happens to be 3. So what we can do is just write down the coefficient. And in all of these cases, you'll notice that the coefficient is 3. So we'll always start with 3 in these examples. Now, once we write down the coefficient in each of them, we could think about expanding the 10 to the second or 10 to the third to help figure out what these things mean. So this really means 3 times 10 to the second. 10 to the second is just 10 times 10, so it's 3 times 100. 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. So this is just, instead of 3 times 10 to the third, it means 3 times 1,000. And here, 10 to the fourth, this should be an exponent. Let me fix that. It's hard to see. 10 to the fourth is 10,000. So when we have um, 3 times 10 to the fourth, what we really have is 3 times 10,000. So we could write like this, 3 times 10,000. Going back and simplifying, 3 times 100 is 300. 3 times 1,000 is 3,000. And 3 times 10,000 is 30,000. So these are the numbers in standard form. Instead of 3 times 10 to the second, we get 300. Instead of 3 times 10 to the third, we get 3,000. Instead of 3 times 10 to the fourth, we get 30,000. Let's look at a pattern here to kind of shorten things up. When you just have a coefficient with one digit, if it's times 10 to the something, all you're going to end up doing is write the coefficient and then as many zeros as the exponent asks for. Because 10 to the fourth is 10,000, so this is just 30,000, or 3 and 4 zeros, which we have right here. In this number, we have 3 and 3 zeros, 3,000. In this number, we have 3 and 2 zeros, or 300. Um, things get a little bit more complicated if you have two coefficients, but not so much. So if you have 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.18, 3.19, 3.
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe a way of thinking about this is that if the decimal point is going to move 11 times and two of the hops are taken by numbers, you know there will be nine zeros after that. So for examples where you have like 3.711 times 10 to the 11th, well now I can quickly recognize that there will be eight zeros because we have 3711. The decimal point is going to move 11 times. The first one, two, three hops are taken up by these numbers and the rest are zeros. So we'll have eight zeros after that. This might save you some time. If the number is negative, don't fret or don't worry. Everything's the same. Negative 3.5 times 10 to the third. Only now the number will become negative. So put that negative symbol down. Put down the coefficient without the decimal and then put the decimal where it belongs. Okay, we're multiplying by 10 three times, so the decimal point will move one, two, three places. So now the answer is 3,500. If we had 3.5 times 10 to the third, we would go through the same process except without the negative sign. One, two, three. So the only difference is that in this case, we always bring the negative sign down. We have negative 3,500 before we had positive 3,500. Um, one thing that might confuse you is if we have something like this, 3.5 times 10 to the negative third. This only means to divide by 10 three times. What's the reason here? What's the logic? Well, before we had positive exponents, which meant multiply. Now we have negative exponents, which is the inverse operation. So instead of multiplying by 10, we divide by 10. This could be tedious, except to remember that when you divide by 10, what you're in fact doing is making a number 10 times smaller. So we end up moving the decimal once to the left for each time we divide by 10. So here we're dividing three times, so we go one, two, three. So the answer here is 0 0.0035. If it was a negative number, Again, we can use the same strategy. Just carry the negative sign down, write down the coefficient, put that decimal in there, and then divide by 10 three times. So in other words, move the decimal to the left one, two, three times. So instead of 0 0.0035, we have negative 0 0.0035. So as one last example, you might see something like this, negative 1.67. 2 times 10 to the negative 12th. Well, don't freak out. Don't worry. Start by carrying down the negative sign. Then, write down the coefficient. Give some space for your zeros. 1, 6, 7, 2. The decimal starts here. And we're dividing by 10 12 times. So that means every time we divide by 10, we move 1 to the left. So, you can ask yourself, how many zeros am I going to have over here? You can count them out by hopping 12 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then put the zeros in. The little slots. I think of them as egg holders. This little curve right here. Or ask yourself, if I'm moving the decimal point 12 times to the left, because I'm dividing, and one of the moves is taken by this 1, there have to be 11 zeros after that. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The reason you might choose to do this instead of counting the zeros for each slot is to see how we draw this. It becomes difficult to fit the zeros into all the spots and easy to lose track. By keeping track of how many hops you should be taking and what direction you're taking them, you can figure out how many zeros there should be. Again, there are 11 zeros here because you're hopping to the left 12 times and one of the hops is taken up by the one. So there are only 11 hops left, and each of those hops will have a zero in it.